Our next speaker is Mark Jacobson. He's the Director of Atmosphere and Energy Program and a Professor of Civil and Environmental Engineering at Stanford University. He received the 2013 Global Green Policy Design Award for developing state and country uh, energy plans. He's on the board of the Solutions Project and a co-founder of that project. And he served on an advisory committee to the US Secretary of Energy, as well as serving uh, as a guest on the David Letterman Show, uh, an appearance I suspect might have been more widely viewed than the many, many, many lectures he's given at events like this. Mark, it's a great pleasure to have you in Vancouver. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, energy plans that we've been developing for changing the energy infrastructure of states and countries in the world. And the reason we're trying to, that I care about this is from an air pollution and climate point of view. Air pollution kills four to seven million people prematurely each year from cardiovascular disease, respiratory illness, complications from asthma. And many of these people, about 20% of these are children under the age of five years old. Uh, these are the lungs of a teenage non-smoker who died in Los Angeles in a car crash in the 1970s. So that's equivalent to smoking two packs of cigarettes per day living in Los Angeles. And most of the world today is actually like this outside of North America and, and Europe these days. So this is really a scourge on society that has to be solved and it's caused solely by, uh, so by fossil fuels and solid biofuel combustion. Now, global warming is a serious and growing problem. Uh, temperatures are rising at a rate faster than any time, uh, even since deglaciation from the last ice age. And it's not only the rate of change of temperature that's so high, but um, also the, the magnitude. Although the, if all the ice melted on the Earth, 7% of all land would uh, disappear, near the coastline in particular. Now, our plans are to change energy infrastructure of all states and countries. We'd use everything we'd be electrified, we'd convert to wind, water, and solar. So all sectors, that's electricity, transportation, heating, cooling, and industry. So we'd have wind turbines, we'd have uh, wave devices, uh, we'd have hydro, hydroelectric power would not grow very much. We're in our plans for all the states and countries, we'd have about the same amount of hydros today, but we'd use it more efficiently. Uh, we'd have tidal power on the top right, uh, geothermal power as well. And we're also gonna use a lot of solar power too, in terms of especially concentrated solar power on the top left, solar photovoltaics and power plants and rooftop solar. Uh, so these electric power options would power not only the electric power sector, uh, but also the transportation sector and heating and cooling sector and in industri industrial sectors. Uh, so for example, uh, you'd have electric cars and some hydrogen fuel cell cars. So these are all existing technologies. All these technologies we're talking about to convert the energy infrastructures are existing. So electric cars for uh, uh, normal transportation, buses, uh, electric trucks, uh, hyd some hydrogen fuel cell buses and trucks for long distance. Uh, where the hydrogen is produced from electricity. Um, and also uh, boats would be either uh, electrified or would have hydrogen uh, to replace bunker fuel, for example, which is really dirty fuel. Uh, tractors would be either electrified or with hydrogen. Uh, ships, like these are existing technologies, electric ferries, for example, that can go back and forth three or four times before recharging. Uh, the hardest thing it'll to change is aircraft. Uh, we'd use cryogenic aircraft, cryogenic hydrogen aircraft, like the space shuttle propelled, was propelled to space with hydrogen. For heating and cooling, we'd use heat pumps uh, run on electricity. These are existing technologies. Uh, water heaters would be heat pump water heaters, again, running on electricity. The, the heat pumps can be run in reverse for air conditioning. Uh, solar hot water preheaters. For industry, we'd use, everything would be electrified. We'd use, for example, arc furnaces, induction furnaces. Uh, some hydrogen as well. Uh, so all four, sect all four major sectors uh, would be electrified. And this would reduce, this would end up reducing uh, power demand, as I'll discuss in a minute, by quite a bit, by almost uh, 30%. Uh, but we'll also need some storage because the wind doesn't always blow, the sun doesn't always shine. Uh, so for concentrated solar power that I discussed, you can have low cost storage like a molten salt or a phase change material to store the heat because you heat this fluid up to a high temperature and you can store it overnight and use it to generate electricity during the night. Hydrogen would be a store, source of storage. Uh, battery storage, although batteries in fact are like 10 to 20 times more expensive than all the other storage I'm going to talk about. So in fact, we found that you don't even need batteries to run the whole uh, United States uh, smoothly with the zero loss of load. Uh, but if you have it, it's better. I mean, it's just, it helps. Uh, pumped hydroelectric is another form of storage that exists. Uh, 
ice storage. This, my university has had an ice cube under a building for, since 1998. And now it has a new ice cube because it just got shut off the only natural gas plant that powered the university. It just reduced 80% of its carbon emissions by adding more ice storage and heat storage, hot water storage, and heat exchanging, and using solar and geothermal to replace it. Um, in Canada, there's a community called Drake Landing, which uh, uses soil storage. It heats the soil through solar collectors on the houses in the summer and heats the soil and then runs in reverse and, uh, and provides 90% of the home heating in the winter. And so this is a seasonal heat storage that's uh, actually very cheap, very inexpensive compared to even batteries. Uh, now, can we power the entire world with wind, water, and solar? Well, the world power demand in 2010 was 13 terawatts at end use. If we, 2050 is expected to go up to 22. But if we convert to wind, water, solar, we reduce power demand to 40 to 14 and a half terawatts, or 33%. In the U.S., we go down 36%. In Canada, we go down 32%, just by going to electricity and some end use energy efficiency. Uh, this is the area required to power the entire U.S. for all purposes with wind, water, and solar. The yellow is spacing for wind turbines you can use for farmland or ranch land. Uh, the orange on the bottom is PV plus CSP for solar. The yellow is rooftop solar. Uh, we'd reuse less than one half of 1% of U.S. land area to power the whole U.S. The footprint. We can make the grid stable. This is a grid integration study showing, using those generators for all 50 states showing the, in, for six years, every month for six years, we match the power demand exactly with the supply and plus storage. And we do this on an hourly basis and also every 30 seconds for six years. Is there enough wind and solar worldwide to power the whole world? Uh, there's about 23 times more world, uh, end use solar available than we need to power the 14 and a half terawatts worldwide in 2050. And for wind, there's about you know, five to six times more wind than you need worldwide. Uh, so most of the wind, in fact, there's a huge offshore wind resource offshore the east coast of the US and Canada that's, unex that's totally unexploited. And also the west coast, although the water goes deeper on the west coast, so it's harder to uh, get that at a low cost. But there's a huge amount of wind onshore and offshore uh, that can actually power the world. But you need a combination of wind and solar to do that. Well, this is, shows the timeline of how to do it. If we don't do anything, uh, our power demand goes up along the top line, and we increase power demand worldwide. But if we convert to wind, water, and solar, we reduce about 0.7 terawatts, which is the gray shaded line, just due to the efficiency of electricity. The 0.2 terawatts gets reduced due to end-use energy efficiency improvements. And then the rest is uh, provided by wind, water, solar by 2050. Thanks very much. Ooh.